episode six of hard points we're back the boys are back in town they're busy gentlemen a little bit late <laughs> on the episode we apologize for that but thank you guys for stopping by for episode six of hard points the atlanta results hell of a tournament there chris i'm sure you're stoked about how your team played <laughs> thank you. but before we get into everything guys make sure you guys follow the hard points podcast sub to each of our youtubes and make sure you guys keep up with all of our content day in day out btb taking over i like but, that as we get oh, into like this, we're going to go through the brackets, how some of the matches played through. Faye's looking goddamn good because of Chris. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're pretty good individually as well. And uh, just give uh, our opinions on if we're surprised by certain results. Uh, some teams not looking so hot and, and go from there. So I'm going to throw up the, uh, the finals sort of placings for you guys and go through that really quickly. I actually just got a full bracket graphic from the CDL social side. Oh, if I perfect. threw a doc, that helps you. <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Well, right now we just got the, the final placements up. Obviously, you guys can see right there, phase in first, Florida, kind of shocking people in the second place right there. Third and fourth for the Rocker and the Huntsman. Royal Ravens and Paris Legion at 5-6. Optic Gaming Los Angeles and Toronto Ultra at 7-8. So... Pretty surprising results out of the couple of the teams, and then some teams sort of falling into the bottom side that we kind of expected. But uh, phase win, let's touch on that. Uh, yeah, I, I always love to start. So, Go ahead, Clint. Uh, yeah, yeah, take yeah, it yeah, over, yeah. baby. You know me. I'm, I'm you always, the, I'm you always, talk. I'm always chomping at the bit to get started. I love it. Uh, yeah, I think we expected them to win. They handled business and won. Um, community seemed pretty split coming in. Um, what to what to expect from FaZe and what to expect from Huntsman with Huntsman coming off the win. Uh, I think there were a lot of people not doubting FaZe, but thinking maybe they were overrated. I, I felt that got boiled down to, we talked so much about how good FaZe was online. Chris, you know, you had those crazy streaks and strims. You guys were so good. I think because Dallas kind of flopped, that there was like this it's feeling worrying. that maybe the same thing would apply to FaZe. For like, sure. oh, Dallas was great online. They stunk at land. Maybe the same one with FaZe. But I don't think any of us were worried about that, so I, I don't think we were shocked to see them perform that well. Um, I'm not going to cover everything because I know there's a lot of stuff you guys want to touch on too, but I think the one thing that really stood out is like we know Selium won MVP, but Simp right now is insane. Like he, he has hit that form where every time you see a top five, top 10 KD at the end of the event, he's going to be the only SMG there or like maybe one other. And I, I can't think of a guy that's consistently done that since like Scump in his prime. That is just always... Did the dude drop the 1.24 with MP5? Like that is he is far and away blowing everyone out of the water. And I, you can say KD's not everything. I know that's always an argument, but it's it helps. Special, it it's definitely special helps. What he's doing. It's special what he's doing. Simp is he's incredible. I think he's the best sub in the game without without question right now. And that is uh impressive considering I thought we pe he almost like peaked last year when he first came on the scene. And he just seems to be getting better and better, man. Yeah, I guess I'll go next because I imagine Chris wants to sort of finish things off because he's the <laughs> he's the winner. Uh, I mean, for me, I, I'm pretty happy. I don't know. Did that article ever come out, Clint? We had like to fill out a season predictions thing and we had to like it was one of those like preseason pick the champion of the year, pick your MVP of the year. And I'm happy with my first result because I picked Selium to be the MVP of the season. Chris, I told you this like Big even last year. Um <laughs> With FaZe, like just watching him develop was a lot of fun. You could tell on that FaZe team, especially in Search and Destroy, he was the guy sort of shot calling. He was the guy figuring things out, right? And it's carried over. Uh, I mean, the FaZe run beat Optic. You know, you beat London 3-1. And then similar to Chicago, you have a bit of a scare on Sunday where you go down 2-0 and you pull off the reverse sweep. And I think that was the tournament for me. I, I just, there was no doubt in my mind. So it was similar to Chicago, you know, in London, there was no doubt in my mind after that, after like just sort of that test um, that they were going to win the event. I mean, just from top to bottom, uh, overall great event. I mean, there's just no weaknesses like we talked about. And, and I think to what you were talking about, Clint, with online performances, like, you can talk about Dallas and I think you can look at Illy and Shotzi and be like, because they haven't proven themselves. Sure. You can go in online and, and say whatever you want. The fact is when you look at this phase team, Simp and Abizi were amazing last year, right? Like major maniac was on Gen G who was a top three, top four team last year. They just didn't do well at champs. Like all of these guys, Priest was on a hundred thieves who we considered the best team all year long. Like, 
all of these guys have proven themselves on, on land. Like that to me is the difference maker to that Dallas argument. It's like, we, we just know the talent of this team and uh, they, they took care of business, man. It was, uh, it was fun to watch. It Can just a question. Go, oh, go ahead. Well, I just want to ask yeah. like the, uh, the, what was it that you guys only lost one, you mentioned how strong they are and everything it was what one Dom, one search, one hard point, right? One yes. Of each. Yes, I'm pretty sure we lost okay. Dom to London, the hard point, and search to Minnesota. That's, and that's it, it, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Deep, go ahead. I just want to make sure I had that right. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, the one thing that I want to bring up is it, it's an eye test sort of thing. But when you watch Phase play, uh, there's and it's not just one or two people. I feel like it's the whole team. They move around the map and they make you work so much harder for each and every gunfight on the map. And when you're doing that throughout the course of a respawn map, the, over the course of a series, over the course of a tournament, like it's just eventually going to favor you. Obviously, this team ha has mastered mechanics way faster. I don't want to say mastered. It has been better at mechanics than every other team from what I've watched. And multiple players just see it. You, you can obviously see this skill gap, at least from my POV. Like other SMGs aren't moving like this team. They aren't as fluid on the map. Uh, it looks clunky. And you can see it on the minimap just when they're when, when you're watching the watching the games. And if the fact that you can have your, your your slower player like Major Maniac not have to do super crazy things. Obviously, Selium picked up a lot of that slack. But like, there was times where if Major Maniac's going to be your quote unquote like least impactful player, you're going to be in a really good spot. No weaknesses. And when I watch other teams play, they look like a mess at times, and they don't have the individual potential to to have people take over. So like. I just give props to the to the players individually because obviously teamwork is super important. Obviously stats are super important. But when you just watch their individual POVs, they look ahead. And I think they're going to be ahead for at least the next month or two unless people can really start to figure that stuff out. Like they just look more cracked. I hate to use that word all the time, but it's the best way to describe <laughs> them. They're moving differently. They're, they're taking gunfights consistently different from other people that I watch. And it's paying off. Chris, you can sort of go into it now. I'm sure you're happy with how the teams perform, but there was some, <laughs> some weakness, right? So, yeah, no, there was there was definitely weakness. Like I, I would like to say, like we're we're playing ahead of the game right now, and I mean to to touch on the points that you guys all said, like yeah, I I think we're playing great. You know, I'm happy with what we're doing. Like I I, I don't want to sit here and like brag about my own team. You know, like they're doing great. No, like, brag they, about it. Go ahead, you won. But <laughs> can a little bit, yeah. But, but at the same time, I know, like, yeah, they're just they're just a good group of people. They love playing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they wanted to get right back in the scrims, and they're just motivated to play. Like, I think the weird thing, what Joe kind of said, the only thing I never understood, and I never really touched on it, and none of us did, because, like, it never did. We just kind of wanted to show up and win to prove that we can. But, like, the whole online thing never made sense to me, just because you have, yeah, like, all the players on the team were never really bad on land. I I don't know where that really ever came out of. Like, I I don't know. Like, you had... People All like the to cop and, out, dude. It's a yeah, cop like, out. I, I, I don't know, because <laughs> even even the online thing, I'm a big believer that online plays the same as LAN. For example, like I like even though people keep saying that Dallas is bad on LAN, they got second place. They <laughs> they like you do you know what I'm saying? Like they didn't yeah. get eighth. Like don't right. like obviously they were ahead. Dallas was probably a little bit ahead, and Clay even admitted this on Twitter. I think he said they were ahead in scrims. I think they had the game early. I, and like they played well. They, and they did their thing, and then people started to catch up, and like they weren't as dominant as in scrims as they were. And then like I think that's where you saw the fall off. But they're still a great team. Like people say they're bad, I feel like that's just crazy, you know. And like the same thing with us. Like I, I don't know. I feel like all our players, including Selium, because to give him a little gas here, I think Selium last year was one of the best players in that game. And I just yeah. don't think people wanted to recognize that because a phase never won. Yeah, and I don't even think they saw finals. But like, just in general, if you watch Selium play my 100 Thieves team last year, when we reverse swept them, that fourth map, Selium, I think dropped like 55 kills, and they <laughs> lost. And it will never be talked about again because yeah. they lost. But he was making plays. Like he's always been very good on land, and I, I'm glad he finally won his first like championship or whatever you want to call it, just because he's just been so good. So I, I was just super proud of how they are. Obviously we showed some weaknesses and we made mistakes. Other teams are still really good. Like I think Minnesota played well, but we'll touch on that a little bit more later. But yeah, just super happy with uh, how the guys are doing and how motivated they, they're going to keep being hopefully. How do you, <clears throat> cause I think we all agree it's too early to talk dynasty stuff yet, but the team is very good and you have a young core with the youngest core in the league. To me, it feels the only thing that will lead to failure for this team will come from internally, whether it's 
uh, egos getting in the way or contract stuff, someone's making more. How, how do you make sure that stuff does not happen? Uh, I mean, personally, the way I would like to do it is I, I really want to, the whole, my whole thing when I talk to Paul, who is like the, the owner, you know, like the, the head honcho of the group, and I talk to him and I really wanted to build like a family where it's not like, yeah, who's making more or what they're, you know what I'm saying? Like what they're doing or this guy wants to be better than this guy. I want to like create the family style of where everyone's happy for each other and we win and lose like together. We're not going to lose and have one of our players go to a group of other players and say, well, this guy sucks on land. He's choked. You know, you know how it goes. Like, I, like, <laughs> I really wanted to build a team that just is genuinely great people outside of game, get along. And when those times do come, like, Obviously, there's going to be contract stuff. There's going to be stuff where people want a little bit more here and there, but keep it to the point where you have to remember that, like, getting on and being happy with your squad and feeling like you're a part of the family scrimming every day is like what you want too. You don't want to get on and be miserable or not happy teaming with so, like, X, Y, or Z. Like, you know what I'm saying? You want to get along with your teammates too. I, I know people always say, like, make your, what's, what's the saying? It's like, don't be friends with your teammates, yeah. make your teammates friends or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. That was, I, I was get old. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I get that, but at the same time, like, you do want to get on every day and be happy, right? So it's like, if you get X amount of dollars, you can get a little bit of a pay raise to play with a lesser team, or you can still do really well and still make really good money and I, win. I, I kind of want to snowball off that point, like the whole family thing. It's so important, and I'm so glad you like are focusing that as a unit. I feel like there's like a stigma with like. The, Players just want to like hold on to their own spot. They don't want to help each other. And it's yeah. weird. How like how is the community and how are people, how are your weaker players on the team ever going to get better with, with the way that some of these players view this? They just sit there yeah. and like roast one another. They and it, it creates an environment of like, I guess like competition, but then it's you're just like it's focused on stat padding. And you're never gonna win like that. You're never gonna improve like that. And obviously, like with my coaching situation, that was, it happened at times too. And it's just like, you need that. Everyone needs to feel comfortable and, and be able to be like vulnerable because everyone's not going to play super perfect all the time. Someone's going to get shit on on your team and who's there to pick them up. And a lot of teams don't have that. And those players are not going to get better and not feel comfortable to say anything. And it's just like, right. I hate seeing that. Like, I just want to see people like have each other's backs a little bit more. Well, and yeah, and to what you're saying, like that's like how I feel you create a dynasty in a, in a league yeah. like this. I feel you have to have people that genuinely want to be here. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't like, like I, I don't know. Like I, I feel like I get along with these guys pretty well. Obviously, I'm a little bit older, and, but like when I'm hanging out with them, like I genuinely do care about these guys. Like Selium, like that's like my little brother. Like it really is. Like when I first started teaming with him, man, like that was like his first ever team. I was his first ever teammate. We had a terrible run. You know what I'm saying? And Till this day, I remember after we didn't call for the league, he pats me on the back and goes, good try, we'll get him next time. I go, tell you. <laughs> I go, tell you. MC, or I call him MC. MC, there, there is no next time, bro. Like, this is it. We're done. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, like our team is over. And that's a, that was the real fact of it. But seriously, no, like, we all, from getting each other birthday gifts and just being a family, like, time five, I feel like that goes a long way. I don't think that's necessary to win championship, uh, championships and stuff. And it's not. Like, my 100 Thieves team did it. Like, yeah. you know, you can do it. But... I don't know. I feel like to create something you want like that, just genuinely you want to be there. And I feel like that's really important. And that's what, kind of what we're trying to instill. Even like even down when we were that's down awesome. O2, like that's how we were kind of it's like a, vibing up there. You so, don't need that I, stuff I mean, when you're winning. You need that stuff when things are going when you're losing. You know? And that, yeah, go ahead. Well, sorry when we were down O2, that's no. Oh, yeah. Sorry. But when we were down O2, too, like that's like kind of the vibe that we had. But yeah. we can talk about that a little later. Go, Jeff. I, I mean, just to like, it's sort of like to, to piggyback off that point, like there was a, like I, I'm big into CS. Uh, the past like two years, Astralis has been dominating, and this article comes out from like Zonic, their coach, and he's like, just the way he talks about it is. Remember that. Yeah. Every time we walk around, it's Astralis, right? Like we are, we go everywhere as a group. We eat together as a group. When other teams see us, we are together. If we go somewhere, if we go to the gym, it's all five of us, like well, six of us. Like he's like. He's like, that might be a little intense for some teams, like you were saying, and that may not be it. But it's like, there is an intimidation factor to that for other people. Like, I don't see, I have net, like, I don't see face. I, I, like, Sunday night, like, yeah. obviously we were in Atlanta, but 
I, I didn't see you guys. I don't know what you were doing. It's just like, I've seen other people. I know what you're talking about where like Sunday night comes around. People start having a few drinks and immediately they take the opportunity to dumpster on their teammates. Yep. Like it's just, it is what it is. It's, it is a toxic environment. Uh, it, and that just doesn't seem to be a thing. Obviously most of your players, I don't even know if one of them can even go to the bar and have a two drink, of them but can. Two, of them can. two of them. Okay. So yeah, I mean that, that, <laughs> that obviously helps, helps, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Like that, that interview always stuck with me. Cause that's how I felt back on like my old optic teams, like old, like yeah. it was me, Ray, big T set, like whoever cap, like we went places together. We ate dinner together. We ate breakfast together. It was a I, family. I we missed didn't, that we too. didn't. Yeah. Like that's just the way it was. It's and, how we were so good on complexity too. I, I, those, yeah. those are my brothers, man. Like it, 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 you form like a bond that you're not going to get somewhere else. And when that goes away, it's just like, it's so easy to, to write people off. So, yep. See, that's what I was actually going to ask you T, because I guess I viewed complexity as being more dysfunctional in finding success at the start. But if so, it was like that early. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, at the start, we were pretty dysfunctional. And then uh, obviously it's just like egos come into it for sure. And then as soon th there was a time though, when we were on the middle of that run where it was like do or die for us. Cause like contract stuff wasn't really going well for us. And it was like, we just kind of, we had a moment where we all kind of looked at each other. It's like, we got to push through and make this happen or else we're not going to make it anywhere. We're not going to get a better contract or anything like that. So it's just like, we came together and we did everything together. And I feel like we just had a trust that it's hard to, hard to find. So if you could, you're the only person here that's been on a true dynasty. I know face isn't there yet, but I think we all agree there's the talent there for the potential, right? The potential is potential. there. Mm -hmm. If you one piece of advice, these phase players, to make sure things don't like fall apart like happened with you, what would it be? Um I feel like it's gonna be hard not to come off like corny. But like it's fine. I'm stay, curious. What you think. Keep the keep the passion, keep the hours of game like going. Don't get lazy in practice. Like focus, like make goals for yourself in practice. Try and go on a hundred map streak in scrims. Try like set the bar so goddamn high for yourself that you're never going to hit it because that's what you need to keep going. I, I feel like when you like lose that fire and you lose the trust in one another, like you need to have it as a unit and that's how you win multiple times. You never lose trust. If someone's doing poorly on the team, that the guy that's doing the best should be the one picking that guy up and bringing that level up together. And I feel like pros just like, write each other off so that they're not the one on the chopping block ever. And it's, I hate yeah. to see that. So I guess that's, those are like the main things I would say. And, and I wasn't part of like a dynasty, but I was part of good teams. The thing yeah. for me, it would just be open dialogue. Like legitimately is like as corny yeah. as that is. It's, it's almost like, I think Chris talked about it where like enable was like, Hey, can one of you guys watch my gameplay? Right. If someone struggles after an event, right? Like someone should just be like, Hey man, like, let's watch your VOD. What are you doing wrong? Maybe you're just, you know, you're not playing as selfish as you need. You're not playing for kills. It's simple things like that. Totally. Like, like get out of your own head. Just play Call of Duty. You've been playing it for years. And it's one of those things where I think if someone has a bad event in the back of their mind, they're like, well, my uh -oh. teammates are already thinking about, yeah, dropping me. Or instead, it should just be like, hey, guys, I struggled that event. Like, my bad. Help me out. Like, you know, give me some tips, watch my gameplay. Obviously now it's different. There's coaching staffs for teams, but instead of like, we talk about like, you know, teams are immediately thinking, drop this player, drop this player. There's no like, Hey, we know you did bad. Acknowledge it. Improve. Simple. Yeah. And it's yeah, just, and it's not, it's not a thing anymore. Well, it is for some people, but mm -hmm. it's, it should be more consistent across the board for all these teams. Yeah. I was going to say like it, I wouldn't say yet to, to touch on the quick topic of I, we're not like a dynasty yet. I feel like we're talking about this yet. Like we have a long way it's to go. Not, not even, you're not even close. Yeah, okay, so I'm just making sure. Yeah. Potential. I just want to make that very clear, but I, but I know we're talking about potential, you know, but yeah. I mean, to be honest of what Joe, like what you just said, like I've been on teams on both ends. I think all uh, me, you and Tyler have been where it's like, all right, I'm getting dropped. All right. Um, like I have like brothers behind me. It's tough to play. My, champ, my champs yeah. team, my champs team, I never thought I was going to get dropped. And I was the worst player on my champs team statistically, but like they all, you know what I'm saying? Like we all believed in each other for a very long time before we broke up. And when we broke up, I literally went to clay face to face and was like, I'm not cutting it. I've been putting in the effort. Like something needs to change. You know what I'm saying? It was not like yeah. clay saying, all right, you suck. Or like behind my back. It was a very like face to face 
I sat down with him, with Cap and Dylan. And we we're like, all right, we need to change because like right now I'm not playing well enough and I, you have opportunities to make a change, like do it. But to, to go what you were saying, like, yeah, no, I mean, that's why I love Priesta. I said it on the desk and like, I, like when I was talking with Courage for a little bit, he has been one of the few teammates. I've had a few others that have like sat me down after a terrible event. And instead of just like saying like, yeah, like, let's just get rid of Chris. Like he's old and he's bad. You know what I'm saying? He yeah, sat yeah. me down. And he's like, bro, like I've seen you play. Like I've played against you and with you. Like, I know you're better than this. Like, let's figure out why you suck. You know what I'm saying? Like, and we would laugh about it. And then scrims after every day, we were talking about it in the car, literally this morning about World War II. We were terrible. We let up the champs. We we're not looking that good. If you go back and watch our World War II champs, we were a good team. Like we got third. I played well. Preston played well, and it was literally after every night of stream. Just that, we, that envy, that envy we, match, right? Yeah. Yeah, we would watch, yeah. dude. We would watch our gameplay back and literally just roast each other, but like in a good, like in a good, fun way. Like, dude, what yeah. are you doing? Like, you got to start aiming in on this play. You know what I'm saying? Like little things like that, and I think we both benefited from a uh, like a lot. And it's that personality just goes such a long way, and that's why I think he is so underrated, just not even as a player, just as a person. And I think yeah. that is just so important. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, that was a really good conversation. Clint, nice job. Yeah. Nice job on that one. It's just like, we could talk about just that topic on its own for probably forever. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, some, I, had, I felt I had some good questions, so I just popped off yeah. the questions let you guys go. Good uh, shit, boys. I like it. So, Bay's come away with the win. They're looking damn good. They're looking to obviously continue the run from this point forward. Uh, I guess let's move on to some other teams throughout the tournament. Uh, I, I'm just going to, while we go over some of these matches, I'm just going to throw up the uh, different group and then the bracket graphics as well. Uh, I don't know if who wants to take it away with a, with a certain team or or whatever, but just kind of go for it. And I'll throw up the brackets and we'll go from there. Uh, what I I think up next, most people probably want to talk about Huntsman. Mm -hmm. uh, I I think everybody was sort of looking forward to Atlanta, Chicago, and, and a lot of times when like you have that match that you just want to see, uh, it doesn't it doesn't happen all the time. Like, it just doesn't, right? Like, the competition is there, and, and I think for Chicago fans, there's a couple of ways to look at it, right? Like. Again, the depth of, of the league, it is good. Like there are a lot of good teams. We just we even saw it at you know at London when they had to reverse sweep Paris. We just saw it here at Atlanta where Atlanta had to reverse sweep Minnesota, and, and unfortunately they lose in a in a game five to a hot Florida team on that day. And it's going to happen to Atlanta where one day they're going to face a hot team on a Sunday or a Saturday and lose a match. Um, if this was a different roster, I would be afraid. Right. Like if it was last year's roster, I, I think I would be worried. But the Huntsman, like guys like Arsties and Envoy, they know exactly what went wrong. They know what they need to fix. And they're going to work on it. Like these guys, it is, it's different than like past formal and scump teams. It just is. Like it feels like there's more of a camaraderie and, and more of a, well, this is what we need to do to play our best Call of Duty. It's just Sunday wasn't their day, right? Like a few players had an off day and they lose in a, in a game five. Yeah, I think uh, I agree with everything you're saying. And then Teep, I think, got I saw a couple comments going at his take about Huntsman before the event where he just said they look vulnerable. They went to a bunch of game fives. They seem very beatable. And I, there were people going at him in the YouTube comments. And I was like, I, he's right. I mean, they, yeah. they look very beatable. They start out, what, 6-0 and in hard points since then. I believe since the Paris match at London, they're three and five. So they've been super inconsistent there. We know their search has improved, but it's not great yet. I think Envoy's tweet after the event kind of nailed it. He said, we're so inconsistent in so many uh, facets of the game, we got to improve. But I talked to, I think I was outside with Gunless, Formal, and Scump after the event, and they were having a really good, dishonest combo about stuff, just saying, you know, we... um we need to get better. This could be this could be good for us in the long run. Just realizing that we aren't aren't the top dog, and we we have a lot of things to improve on. And even like little stuff like Scump just didn't personally think he played very well. He said he just he, it was weird because he said he like played less before London and felt so good. He played more before Atlanta. And he just it just wasn't clicking. He's like my movement felt off, and that was like hurting my confidence. I th I think it really truly was a fluke of a weekend. It was just an off weekend where they weren't playing at their best. Um. But I, I tweeted this out the other day. Part of me is glad they didn't get to the final verse phase because I truly believe they would have got 3 0 bopped. I do not think it would have been a close series with how Huntsman was playing that particular weekend. And now it sets up for something crazy because they haven't played yet. I think we all agree they're still the top two teams. Yep. Um, what is it? Huntsman won't be at LA. Let's say Atlanta win that. Then Atlanta won't be at Dallas. Dallas yeah. Let's say Huntsman win that. They next match up in Chicago. 
So <laughs> that would be insane from a storyline standpoint. That's how it plays out. Obviously, a lot of things have to fall into place and it it might not go that route, but I think that's the most logical route it goes if you were to think about it right now. So I don't I I, I think with Joe too, it's not I'm not I'm not that worried yet. I think I think, and I've said this since the beginning of the year. If this team loses a lot of events in a row, if they are bad multiple events in a row, um, I start to get a little bit worried about some of the personalities clashing. But I think the fact that they won the first event and handled business, it almost gives them a more cu- more of a cushion for me, yeah. uh, where I'm not really worried about that because they proved they can win. Um, but yeah, it's, that's that's my take on it. They're going to bounce back. Not too worried. Yeah, I, I think it's a bit of a reality check. They they come off hot. They, they prove their point. They get the Dallas wins, right? That's super important. Uh, the biggest thing is you finally see how the team is playing when you have individuals kind of underperforming. Call of Duty is very easy as a team when you're positive. When you're when you're dropping a one point two as a team, you're having a laugh. You know, hard points real easy. Wow, we run that rotation. Our rotations were fluid there. What happens when you're twenty and thirty? Are you making? Are yeah. you going the right way off spawn? Are your smokes good every single time you throw them? Are your nades money? Are you calling out how you should? Are you directing people when you should? Are you calling out spawns? That, that's just a. Like, there's so many things you can rattle off when you're doing poorly on the map. And that, uh, you need a situation like that. You need some sort of failure for them to like open up and be like, oh, crap. Like I need to put more out on the table if I don't put up the stats. So like you, you have individuals on that team that don't perform like you're used to seeing from them. And you just see the, uh, the, the things sort of fall through with their gameplay. There's a lot of times in hard point where I'm like, wow, that rotation seemed like five, ten seconds late. Like what the hell was that? And it's just like, it's situations like that that I don't know if they've gotten enough like failures yet to to know what to do when things are going poorly for them in hard point. So just a, as an example. So I'm interested to see how they bounce back. I think they do have the level heads to to make a lot of improvements very quickly. So I'm excited to see how how people turn around. I guess the one person I'm just surprised to see to to see do so poorly after how he's looked in Modern Warfare is I guess Gunless. Uh, he I don't know I. Uh, I feel like Seth, obviously, I know Seth a little bit better. So, like, uh, I kind of expect Seth to maybe have, like, up and down performances, just how he's been recently. But, like, Gunless, he's looked so phenomenal, and he just looked off as well. So, I, that's, like, the one person on the team where I just didn't think you'd have a lackluster performance like that. Even just if you're talking purely stats, like, I know we've hammered home the fact that every AR is dominating. Like, even, yeah, even, when, a team's not, was gonna say. even when a team's not doing well... The AR is dominating. Like who's who's a team that didn't do great? That okay, optic. Even Dashi drops a yeah. 1.08 or yeah. Waskin. Was, what the hell did Waskin drop? A 1.38. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1.38. So even yeah. when teams are doing well, the ARs are dropping bombs. What was formal? A 0.99, yeah. right? Yeah. Somewhere in there. 0.99. Um, which which surprised me, I guess, just because I think at the first two events, when even when teams aren't succeeding, their ARs are dropping numbers. So I think it wasn't just a fact of like, you know, one guy being off. Like I, I think it was a team-wide thing where just no one was Definitely. really truly on point. And if that's going to happen, you're in trouble. Um, I, I don't know how you pick that up, but when, when people are off, like that's just going to happen. When it's single limb, you're yeah, in trouble. Like Chris, what, what, do you, what, 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 what would you say with your guys? Because you, you obviously have twisted talent on your team. Like Your guys are insane. How do you get past like individual performances not great? Like What, what do you think is your biggest strength to get past it, I guess. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like I said this last podcast, and I think this is how Huntsman's probably thinking. This is how if we lost to Minnesota, that's exactly how I would have thought too, to be honest, is like you're going to lose. It, you know, like the way this this format is, you can like it's very hard. Like it's very easy to win because it's single limb. All you got to do is win two matches. You know what I'm saying? But it's also very hard to win because all it takes is that one mistake we make against Minnesota where they're a great team, a phenomenal team. They played well that entire map, and they beat us on that hack in the yard. We're down 0-1. You know what I'm saying? Like, right then and there, it's like the entire series has changed. So it's like, I I don't think I would worry about it too much. I mean, if if they are all confident and they're all champions, like, I'm not too worried about them. It's kind of what we're saying. I think, like, they just had an off day. Like, I've seen mm-hmm. my team. I've seen the best teams in the world. You guys have been on some of the best teams in the world. Like, you're going to get on one day and just, get smoked on the in online scrims and obviously a lot of people just start whining about how it's online and not land and i've also scrimmed on land now recently when i was world war ii and everything was on land like you're gonna get on some days and just be off you know and yeah. pick the wrong sunday and other, other teams are gonna peak and too yeah yeah like, yeah, like a, the tournament that i won in world war ii 
Do you think if we played that optics team again the next Sunday, we would have won? No, we would have gotten <laughs> smoked. We, you know what I'm saying? But we won that day. Like that one hurt. It's not. Yeah, that final, <laughs> that final was wow. That killed the team. That final killed that roster. Oh god, yeah, that was fun to deal with. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> that, that happens, though, you know, like that really does happen. And I honestly, if this was like three weekends uh, in a row, obviously, then we have to have start having different conversations about this. But right now. They came out slow on a Sunday, and it happens. It, it's it's not the end of the world, and it, they're still they're a great be team. Fine, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like that's why. Like, I people ask me, I got the question so many times. I actually hated the question, but I got it. Like, <laughs> were you disappointed and not talking, like not seeing them in the final? It's like I disappointed as I feel like discrediting other teams. I think there's a lot of great teams in this league. There's only 60 players, and they're all you know. What I'm saying that's not a lot of people, but like. No, like it was, it's not a disappointment. Like they had an off weekend and it's not the end of the world. Like, yeah, it's just like, I don't know. You know, like they I still feel got like people to the are... semifinal, right? They yeah, still, like, they still got top four. They had a bunch of CDL points. Like, yeah, yeah they're such, it, that it, was it a was good was... weekend for Chicago. It wasn't There's bad. One thing that maybe you want to like focus on, it's like maybe the first match, like going all the way game five, round 11 with Toronto. Like, that's a little scary. Yeah. But like, you know, like beating Rocker 3 1, that's a good win. Like we we know how good Rocker, Rocker yeah. is, right? And then losing a game five to Florida, it's like in a semifinal. We we just talked about it. it's probably it's yeah. gonna happen. It's gonna happen to everybody. So if there's one thing where you're like, ah, eh, maybe this is a little sketchy, maybe that Toronto game. Uh, but everything else, like, you still got top four. They competed and, with with Florida. Like, I, I don't know. And that's it. To answer your question, Maven. So basically, it's like, yeah, like I just would shake it off, you know? Like they're those guys are all confident. They're not gonna let that break them. You know, like this. Well, shake I don't it mean off afterwards. And... I more mean when it's happening. Like, oh, I mean when it's happening, the like best how way... do you how do you overcome when you're just playing like shit, sort of? Is there that's, anything you can do? I... Uh I mean, if you're playing like shit and you can acknowledge you're playing like shit, for me, like as a player, I played like shit a lot. You know? <laughs> but like it's like but when you are, you just have to make sure you're making the right plays in the system of however your team likes to play it. Like every hill, everything, you know, you have like the specific breaks, holds, rotations, whatever it is. Like just stick to your rules, you know, it's just, just do your thing. Like you can win while going negative. I'm pretty sure one of them, I, I think we had a map on land this think, weekend where we got or something. smoked. I remember Other that. than selling them, everyone got smoked. Yeah, that was me. And we did it. Or both and it's just, I'm guys. telling you, like it's just, we, with all those guys knew like, Stick to the system. We, we might be having an off game, but you can still win. It. You know, no, like, there's Ravens. someone on your, was against Ravens. Both, yeah, both there's are. someone on your team that can pick it up. Selium was the guy, and everyone else just do your thing. Like you know, yeah. there's times where you have to take the back seat and be like, all right, like yo, you go do your thing. I'm kind of the ass right now. You know what I'm saying? And then there's there's times <laughs> yeah, where like I'm it's going like, in right, first. Yo, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's what I think is like really special about the guys on our team being so young, like having so much eyes on them. It's just they 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 understand that, you know. And I think that goes a long way, with, especially when you're having individual off series. Good point. Yeah, I think that that's uh pretty cover covers a lot about Huntsman. Uh, we all feel yeah. very confident about the team still. Obviously, oh, yeah, amazing sure. roster. Really. Uh, a lot of promise still to be showed, I'm sure. But uh, I guess we can move on. Unless anyone else has any other points about the Huntsman, but uh, move on to the Florida shocking people making it to the final, looking pretty damn good. Uh, kind of got smoked in the final, but regardless of that, they they had some crazy ass wins that a lot of people did not expect. Uh, individuals performing on the team, like, uh, I don't know, Havoc, for example, looked like a completely different player. Uh, many players on the team, to be honest. Skies look great. So, yeah. Individuals shining through. Uh, kind of a scrappy team, but the fact they're able Very to pull scrappy, out so many yeah. wins and, and strong S&D, man, it's going to, over the course of the year, it's going to be very, very important. It's just crazy when you think about some of their series and the fact they got to a final. Like, Joe and I cast their first series against London. They got shit on. They got. Sh I looked at because you picked Florida come out after map one. I go, Joe, you worried? He goes, Yeah. Like they just got fried in that series. Then think about the optic series to get to the semi. They won around eleven game two. They had the draw one point win in the game three. Like they had some insane. They, I don't even know how. Do we just watch back the final minute of that dom? It, it's absurd. They won that game. Like yep. how, how that finished was wild. So considering how they started and the fact they got there, I think it's a testament to what Chris was talking about. Like. There are days where anyone's going to be able to win. Someone's going to get hot, and they're going to make a run. I think that's what makes this current kind of schedule and format really interesting. Is like there's going to be your Floridas that that make a run, and you know they get more screen time. They get they get a chance to really be up on the main stage in the final. And I thought it was really cool. Now, do do I think they're a top two team? No, I do not. Uh, do I think they have potential to make a run like that again? Yeah, but I guess I feel like that about 
nearly everybody outside of like <laughs> this, this top ticket and ultra right now yeah. that, that yeah. can actually get to a final. Um, so I just thought it was cool because I saw I saw Ogre Two in the back, their GM after the first series. He just looks at me and goes, <laughs> for them to for them to get back and and do that. I thought it was cool. And then I thought the uh, uh, just to, just a to touch. I don't want to dive in too much, but God, our community is so soft sometimes. Like that that Mutineers versus Huntsman series was so cool because of the brother storyline yeah. and. I, for one, thought that moment was just, it was awesome. I mean, and people need to understand, RCs didn't have to do that interview. Like, he can mm. say no. No one's forced to do that stuff. Um, was it a tough moment to watch for some? Yeah. Did people cry? Yeah. I call that a beautiful goddamn moment. When we were up yeah. there commentating, when I saw the shot of their mom, I almost lost it. I literally had to hold back tears mid-cast. So That's how I felt it was just, it too. Dude, it was a beautiful <laughs> moment. And, like, is it a hard to watch? Is it tough to swallow? Yeah, but whew, I just thought that was one of the cooler moments we've captured this year. Uh, without Call of Duty in general, yeah, yeah. It, it was it was it was crazy to see. But yeah, I I don't know. That was awesome. Just a big moment for for Pristini. The guy has not gotten enough credit. Uh, I'll keep saying it until he keeps getting the credit. He played really really <laughs> well. He won a world championship. The guy's on a on a solid run as well. Everyone's talking about all the other players like doing so well like he's in a good spot like people are underrating the roster he's performing well and for him to like it probably just gave him a lot of confidence who thought that they would even have a chance in hell versus Huntsman I I didn't so the fact that he's able to like prove it to himself is just as a player and and getting a big win over like a a favored roster it's awesome uh you love to see it the interview was super emotional uh and and you just got to capture stuff like that it's a great point like it gets the feels going. It gets you human invested. moments, man. Yeah. These guys are humans. And if like, you know their story I, as people too, like it, it's awesome to see it. I just think people need to understand, like they don't have to do that shit. Yeah. Like not at all. Yeah. RC's maybe he felt he did. I, I don't know. I wasn't there when it happened, but he didn't have to do it. Um, I, I want to think that he understood the importance of it at the time, and it was it was great that it got captured. But I just saw so many Reddit posts and tweets like, "How dare you do that to him?" Like, I think that is one thing he's going to look back at in his career, and it's going to be. A wild moment that him and his brother had, and they're going to talk about it twenty years from now. Like it's yeah. just, uh, yeah. uh, Chris, anything on on Florida? Uh no, I mean, well, Joe was right. So Joe, I, I, I thought Joe I was made the pick. Joe, yeah, I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna let Joe go, but I mean, uh, honestly, yeah, well, go ahead, dude, go ahead, go yeah, ahead. No, you're, yeah, you're, I'll you're go last, yeah. I mean, I, I'm happy that Prasini played well like uh, oh like overall i i think very highly of their coach uh ricky atura i actually wanted him to do the whole walkout you know how like they had the coaches walk through the crowd this time i really wanted him to do that i'm happy he did it like for the final because i think he is a really bright mind in call of duty uh he doesn't get talked enough uh uh, talked about enough and just watching their team do well was awesome i that's a scrappy team like would it i wouldn't say like i'm surprised they made a run kind of like what maven just said like I think any team, this is a competitive league. Yeah, I really do. With a single limb, I think you can show up on a Sunday and these teams are good. You know, like these, all these guys are good. Like I'm not discrediting any team at, ever just because of love, how well I they love can it. play. I love it, man. And it's great. And that's the thing. That's the best part about it. But I was just, I was just so happy for Pristini because I've been a big fan of him since Black Ops 3 Champs when I was casting. You know what I'm saying? Like when I was, I was retired at the moment, I was casting and I watched this guy play and I was, and he got like a six piece HVK feed on rise on literally i think it was evac hardpoint i think i remember remember it like vividly and <laughs> i was like wow this guy is good and like the way he plays man it's it's kind of like if you relate it to my team a bz is someone who you talk about simp and he's always got this one three kd and he's amazing simp's uh, incredible and you talk about selling him and you talk about these guys but like a bz is putting up like a 1.05 or something but that's not the same as most people's 1.05 you yeah. know and that's how i view pristini man like if Rossini puts up a 0.8 to 1.05, like in that range, man, like that is just not the same as a lot of players would like that's that. And it is just the way they play, how impactful he is on the map. You can even see it when he was playing against Huntsman. He was an absolute menace on the map and the search and destroys. He was running all over the place. Like he, he plays his player. guns. Yes. That's like he's my a favorite player to go, is like, to go against. What we see a lot of times in search is like a team will go down 3-0. They slow things down. They don't mm-hmm. like go for map pressure. 
Pristini is just like, I'm down three. I'm going. Don't care. Yeah. That's almost <laughs> like when he turns on the Jets, right? Like, yeah, well, we're down. So screw it. I'm hitting it. <laughs> What's it matter? Right. And I just don't think a lot of people and have that, gets that. overlooked. And that gets overlooked, mm-hmm. man. I'm telling you, he is so much better than people have given him credit for. And I hope this year people start to appreciate him more just because I, I don't know. There's, he, he's a great player. Uh, I like him as a person. I think he's pretty motivated as well. I can't speak to that too well because I don't know him that well, you know, like how his practice and yeah. his work ethic is, but he just seems to, to really care and watching him do well is just the best part about that. So I don't know. That's what I, that was my biggest take for them. I was just happy for him. Really. I really was. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go at this a different way for Florida. Um, I picked them to get out of groups. Why? I don't know. I, I didn't trust optic and, I, I don't trust London. And I was just sort of like, I don't know if it comes down to a few game fives, who am I going to take? And I, I went with sort of like the, the Gen G guys. Cause I, I think that Gen G team last year was super overlooked. Um, this guy's had a breakout year. So I, I just felt like this roster, <laughs> this roster overall was, was overlooked in a way. Um, do I, would it surprise me if at the next event, they, they got knocked out of groups and didn't make a semifinal. They lost the first two matches. Absolutely not, because there does need to be more consistency. Like, yes, Pristini can play at this play style. Great. But you know what? I mean, we know the women winning formula, right? You have to be able to slay with your Chicago's. And I know they won in a game five, but I, I don't know if that's going to continue to happen where they're going to get reverse sweeps on them. Or you play your Dallas as your Atlanta's. You have to be able to slay with them. And what we got at Skies was, was awesome. But I'm looking at the other two, some machine gun players in Frosty and Havoc. Um, you have a lot of pace here, right? A guy like Frosty, Havoc and Pristini are in front of you. I feel like you got to be able to produce a little bit more. Um, so for me, they aren't going to win playing this way. Uh, it's just the way it is. There needs to be a little bit more consistency on their side. I like the team a lot. Like That's why I, I thought they were going to get out of groups. I like the composition of the team. I know they're going to be a strong search and destroy team. But beating the best teams in the world, there has to be more consistent slaying. And until I see that, I don't think they're going to win an event. But they can have a day like this where they can get to a final or they can get out of groups. For Absolutely. Uh, it reminds me of Gen.G in a lot mm-hmm. of ways. Like I never thought Gen.G was going to win. We talked about it on Trading Shots. How many times, Clint? Like w- w- Nobody ever picked them. It's just because those guys, when you go up against your 100 Thieves and, and your other teams, we didn't think they could slay with them. They could play the correct way, but it still comes down to those key gunfight moments, those key, those key kills on the map, and nobody trusted them to do that in the big moment. And that is very similar to me for this Florida roster. They have to be able to pick it up just a little bit at certain times and be more consistent in response. And I think you have a, a very good one. But yeah, yeah again, it, it wouldn't surprise me if the next event, they don't make top four. Yeah. Um, because no, a lot of the a things, a lot of things went their way. The to to bounce off that point, you look at Pristini and Havoc's play style. It's not going to be them. They're going to be one point one to point nine players. It's they play too fast. Yeah. They play too scrappy. Too it, the game is a shit show when they're on the map. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be Mox or Frosty. Mox yep. dropped a point nine nine. He's a slow player. Everyone knows that, right? Like he's he's a slower player on the team. It's got to be him or it's got to be Frosty that's good, that needs to put up not superstar stats, but a 1.1 yeah. plus. Like, uh, Skies proved himself, <laughs> in my opinion. He, he's still slaying. He's still going, right? You, you, need, you need some more. And obviously, there's a lot that goes into getting kills and getting stats or whatever. But you need one more player on that team that can, can put up the muscle that uh, you need yep. to be consistently good enough in respawn versus the top teams. Completely agree with the points, to be honest, because... And until they find that form with with one of those two guys, uh, yeah, I, I I'm on the same page, man. I, I don't see them consistently being able to to get through. I don't know, like groups or a big bracket match. And that's the name of the game in COD, man, is consistency. Yeah, like that's that's how you end this year as a team or as an organization with three or four championships under your belt. It, and you that's know? the name of Pristine and Havoc's career is inconsistency, <laughs> yeah. and that's what's scary. Like. It is. And I, I know like we just talked about Pristini, like how like the impact he has, but still, like, you know, what is he averaging in hardpoint? I, I I forget. It's fifty-seven engagements. Like like if he's losing yeah, you know, 
60 to 70 percent of those, that's not good. But you flip that and he's winning, you know, I don't know, 60 percent of those. That's going to make everybody's life so much easier. Mm -hmm. That's why I think he meshed with Ty, uh, like our Abizi and Sim so well. I think right, the but way, that, like, that's yeah. why I think like yeah. it, it, the dynamic between him, Havoc, and Frosty, someone should be going off or picking up more. It, it's just the way it should be. Yeah, I agree with that. One one thing I want to touch on something that Teep said before we get to a team that I really really want to talk about. Yeah. Sure. Uh, you said someone has to step it up, and I actually do think the person with the most room to improve is Mox. Um, I think we have all seen him be the most vocal about not liking this particular title, not wanting to put time in this particular title. Um, I saw a response to a fan, I think, he had the just two days ago. It's basically said, I suck right now. I do not play the game enough. I'm going to turn it around. And I think, I guess, if there is one thing that might lock him in a little bit more, it's probably getting to a grand final and realizing, hey, we actually have a chance to do some stuff with this team. So... I think if he can get back to what he was with Genji and be like a top top player in that flex position, I think it helps him a lot with the consistency thing. But we'll see if he can. Well, that's just a role winding, thing, though, right? Winding down and focus on the game. He, he wasn't a flex with Genji, right? Like that's just yeah, a role sure. thing where he's going to have yeah. to get comfortable with a sub. Skies is obviously doing what um, the main ARs are doing. So yeah, I mean, he's got to figure it out. Even more and reason he needs to play the damn game more. Yeah. yeah. And a, su a sub role in this game is not like a sub role in in Black Ops Four. It is it, no. the way that you have to be twisted right now in this game like <laughs> it's crazy it, it's crazy so yeah it's, it's it's for a player like him to switch his like his slower play style as people like to say to a sub role in this game it is it's tough it's that's not an easy transition mm -hmm. whatsoever extra time put it in simple as that yep. all right clint bring us in i know you want to talk <laughs> about it all right i am on the record as saying optic gaming have the perfect uh, roster and that uh, <laughs> i think they will eventually be the best team in the game um, all right, let's start by me saying I'm not sure it's necessarily completely hit the panic button time, but we are getting we are getting damn close. Um, so, Teep, I'm going to involve you in this conversation because I've been okay. trying to think about I've actually thought about this a lot because I said that on the record. And I don't want to look like a jackass. Um, I think we all agree from a talent standpoint, this team should work. Yes, Cap might not be the best, but it still should work on the back of the four other players. Would it be better if this was a 2AR meta more? Sure. But even without that, they should be good. So that makes you question, what is going wrong if it's not the talent standpoint? And I started thinking about it more, and it took me back to last year, which, Teep, you were coaching the Optic Gaming roster. Yep. Um, Krim, which I think we can all agree, shares some similarities with Slasher when you talk about mindset and presence. Krim really got frustrated with TJ and Dashi. Because they were acting like children. He said he was constantly babysitting. He said they didn't put the effort in in scrims. He said they didn't try to get better. He pinned a lot on them publicly. I think back then, because Krim was playing so poorly statistically, that I thought it was almost Krim just kind of pushing off his own results onto those two. Now, with how this team is not seemingly getting much better and still struggling, I find myself wondering, is there a whole lot more truth to what Krim was saying and Dashi and TJ are giant goddamn babies. And they need to turn it around if this team is going to improve. I'm starting to fall into that side of things. Uh, Detective Clint is on the case. Optic <laughs> looks like shit. There, <laughs> there's, it, it could be a, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, I guess to the, to the first point, the similarities between... I want to hear between, your opinion from Optic. Yes, yeah, when you for sure. With them, the the, the similarities between Slasher and, and Ian. Um, so obviously I, I team with Slasher for a little bit. Our team sucked when I was, we was Black Ops 3, that Envy team. Like Slasher wants quick results. He wants to turn things around and he's going to be vocal enough to get those results or something's going to happen, right? So we're, we're getting <laughs> that same sort of point there because they're not having any, any sort of success. Then speaking to the, to, to the Dashi and TJ side of it, there's no way they're probably doing well in that environment too because they didn't always do well with Ian being that way. And I have to admit myself, like I was a hard ass in scrims too. That's how I am. If you're not always challenging yourself and you're always taking, I don't know, I don't want to say the easy way out, but if you're not like putting full effort in all the time and like really trying to focus on your weak points, it's going to take you longer and longer to improve. There's also times where I don't feel like Krim Ian like owned up to his own shit enough in scrims too. Like he was trying to one, he, he was trying to be the one being serious, the hard ass, trying to fix every single mistake and maybe not focusing on his own mistakes enough too. So I don't want to take both sides. There, there was times where Dashi and Tej 
they're they're my boys. I love those guys. I I think we we under underperformed as a roster, but there was definitely times where they were not taking their jobs serious enough in scrims. They were copping out because of online. It, it pissed me the hell off. That we wasted so much time with practice, and then there was other times where Ian was being a hard headed fucking guy as well. And it just creates this butting of heads between the two different sides. And there's me and Barlow in the middle like, guys, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> so doing that for an extended period of time just created such a, a crazy tension with, within our team. And obviously, we saw what happened when, when the whole split went down. So I'm, I'm worried we're right back there. It, I don't know if it, I don't know if enough time has gone by yet. And I don't want to just instantly write off that Dashie and Tej like aren't taking it serious. I don't believe it for a second. I think we've already I seen. Uh, I uh, anyways, I, I've given my opinion. Like, y you need certain people to be cracked in this game, and Dashy needs to be the do it all, for, like flex, sub, pull out whatever gun necessary, and drop. He's doing it now, right? Yeah. So, app so apparently he switched over. I think Slasher being in that main AR role makes a lot more sense for the team and for his play style. Dashy, do not whatever is necessary. You don't want to be baiting your team and everything, but. Be dashy, be cracked, and get a million altercations with a 1.2 KD. And then everyone else just try and like figure it out in a sense. So like I think the the role switch makes a lot of sense for what we've seen from them so far. But um eh, man, it, it's looking scary for sure. Well, yeah, I just I I I have been, I mean I could be wrong, but I've become convinced that that is what's going on. Um and maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong, but that I I've convinced myself of that via my intelligent brain. But I have another question now. I guess we'll I'll kind of pitch to Chris and Joe. Is it at the point where if, I mean, do these guys basically need to get to the final in LA? Otherwise the team change is happening. Yes, I think that's, so. That's kind of how I feel. I, I, I think, well, it depends how it goes. Uh, I just think knowing Slasher and Kenny, obviously more than the others, I know, even Cap, I know Cap very I just, they don't go to these events to get sixth fourth third you know what i'm saying like they, they they're not happy like you, you you can go to this event and they can be say like you talk about the the teams that have won they can be chicago and then atlanta i know chicago's not there and then they get third place somehow no that doesn't matter they're pissed off they're not happy they're not satisfied and like and they're not going to be people that want to deal with it obviously i don't know the internal problems but i yeah i think if they were to come out here and not show a sign of life like a good sign of life yeah. like a final you know what i'm saying i i think okay they're gonna start getting tired of it personally. can i actually pitch you a different question joe sure this is on a different side of it similar to what i talked to Teep about but okay so we know all the rumors about dashy wanting to leave for chicago last second right we heard all that right after we when all the rosters were rumored i don't know how much was public but i know that people were discussing it in the sense that we heard dashy wanted to go to the huntsman instead of optic yeah, like we he know, was like trying to get out of his contract. Yes, yes. Thing. Like we, yeah. we heard all those rumors. So we know that Dashy was, he had that little brief thing with complexity, but when he blew up, when he was a superstar, was in the optic glory time. With Hector's optic, he blew up. There were the Bruce chants. He was the duo of Scump. He was Mr. Do-It-All. The entire crowd was behind him at every event. It could not be the more opposite now with fake optic, whatever you want to call it. There aren't the chants going down. He's not the superstar. He's not on the Scump Huntsman team. With how young he is, do you think that is a scenario that might be too much for his ego, or just too much for him as a player? Well, I, I just think it's one of those things where, like, he he got the you know he got the good stuff, man, right away, right? Like you you got the good stuff. You know you know what it was like to be on you know on optic, right? Like to 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 have that fan base behind you to play well. And so I mean, they won one title, but like everybody knew it was like it was like if we we're gonna win, Dash you had to go off. Um, so yeah, I just think it's different for him. I mean, it's like hard. I, I don't know. I don't know if he can just like accept it or this is like that. Like I need to grow up moment. Like I, I need to that's own I this. It. Yeah. That's how I view like, it. Like it, it's the same thing for TJ. Like it's the same thing. Like touching on Dashy and Slash, you're like TJ played horrible. Yeah. <laughs> like he played horrible. <laughs> yeah. Like he did. He was so like, bad. We're not talking about cap stats. Like, yeah. <laughs> like this is this to me. So what we were talking about at the top of the show, this is that. The, the complete opposite of what we're talking about. Like these guys need to get in a room and just figure it out. You know what? Like, what do we want to do? How do we want to do it? You know what? You maybe 
obviously there's like a lot like, you know, Cap's not playing well. So much be like, hey, Cap, you're not playing well. Let's figure it out. Let's get you better. <laughs> right? He, like I, I let me interject for one second. Yeah. Here's the stats. Dashy, 1.08. Cap, 0.81. Kenny, yeah. 0.81. Slasher, 0.88. Tej, 0.74. Those are all trash. So like horrible. Continue with your point, even but Dash man, they okay, are a he's mess. The, he's the M4. So yeah, like, I mean, right. that's just, that's what we've been yeah. seeing. Go on with your point, but like, wow, that's not good. But this is the yeah. thing. Like, are these guys doing simple things like VOD sessions? What is Pac-Man doing as coach? I have no idea. I don't know how this team is as dysfunctional as it is when you have all of these pieces, like, and especially when you have pieces like Kenny slasher and cap, like, Maybe we know last year with like TJ and, and Kenny, it was maybe a little dysfunctional, right? They wanted to have fun and, you know, scump would egg them on. We know Seth likes to have fun and they probably felt protected by that. Like that was probably like protect me, big brother type thing from the big bad man named Crim Six. <laughs> um, but yeah, not, now he, you don't, they don't have that. Like in, they just should be able to get to these guys. Like we play at a certain way. Like we show up on time for scrims. We give it a hundred percent. Like we have a VOD session. What goes wrong? What isn't going wrong? And it, I, I just don't know if that's happening. And I would probably say with the results in zero CDL probably points not. that it's not happening. It just what, makes no what, sense. What's crazy though, Joe, is that I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I'm worried it's past the point of fixing it already. And I don't I don't know if it is, but that's what I'm starting to get worried about. Like I said, I'm not hitting the panic button, but there's part of me that's worried it's past that. But what's also crazy, though, when you think about this, the other stats haven't been good. The other results haven't been good. They've lost to Chicago. They won a tournament. Yeah. They've lost to Faze. They won a tournament. They lost to Florida. They just got second. They lost to Paris after they were like a top four team with winning both their matches in Minnesota and getting to a, uh, what, a semifinal. So all four of their losses, none of them are... None of them are bad. Like they couldn't cool. beat Florida. But so here's my rebuttal I, I, to that. Here's I, I, my they don't look good, but like their losses aren't even bad. Here's my rebuttal to that. Yeah, Paris got a top four. Guess what happened to this event? Double bopped out. Well, but that okay. was back when, but they played them back when they were hot. Sure. Cool. What, yeah. Whatever you want to say. Same thing with Florida. We just talked about it. We don't believe Florida is going to be a consistent top two team. So like they should be able to beat these teams. They should have CDL points. Like the fact that they don't, I get it. They had some tough draws. It, it's just to me, I don't know, man. It's just a dysfunctional mess, and yeah. it shouldn't be. It, it really shouldn't be. Winning is the only thing that fixes that sometimes, man. Like, uh, but like yeah, I, I we're mean, able to talk somewhat positive points for even teams that are struggling, right? Like, yeah. What's the shining star for them? Man. Yeah, go ahead, Crowder. I have well, two things to to maybe to your argument with you and Jodis right there. Florida doesn't get second if Optic wins. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, like Florida, like. You guys just said like you don't think Florida's a top two team, so like yeah. them losing to a team that got second is because they let them get second. You know what I'm saying? Like that. So it's that's probably not the best way to evaluate that. But I'm not saying anything bad about Florida. Well, I mean, or, the fact that they beat Huntsman right I, after. No, I know what you game. mean. I know what you mean. But regardless, uh, the only thing I'm not hitting the panic button on on OGLA. You just screw the slasher. Don't give up on slasher thing. Like I I, I think he's great. Everyone knows that. I'm saying this now. I just. I think the loss to us being a 3-0 in a pretty dominant fashion, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that hurt them more, in my opinion, because I'm telling you, I really thought I picked them to get out of the groups, and I obviously watched them play, like, when they play my team. Like, this OGLA team still has, like, maybe not, I haven't played them since, but they have signs of life. Like, they are a good team when they want to be. I don't know, obviously, I don't know the internal matters, but, like, they are a good team when they want to be. It's just I feel like after they lost, it could have been a product of like them saying like like them getting frustrated at the tournament and not like regaining from it. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know because I really thought like they looked good before that event, man. Like they really I did. just I just don't I just, know what happened after they lost to us, but I feel like that was a big part of it. Like to me, that just with this format cannot be an excuse. Anymore. Oh, I agree. Just I can't. agree. That's that's it's yeah. the same thing with like well on Sunday they had a match before us can't be a thing anymore it just can't with this format you have yeah. to be prepped at all times so i don't know like I, I really don't know like nobody played that well like it really didn't i i don't know if the i think slash will be more comfortable uh but there was a reason dashy wanted to run a main ar uh i was watching tens last night with dashy with a mp5 and i mean to me it's almost like a maddox where he can do whatever That's the right. heck that he was wants my point. like 
Yeah, I mean, the guy oh, can do whatever do he it wants. All. <laughs> Let him move around uh, the map. He's nuts. I, I think, unfortunately, the guy who slipped under all of this is Kenny. I, I still think Kenny is... I've watched scrims, and I think he underperformed this event. I think he's still really freaking good. Um, to me, it's just on... I don't know. Can Slasher get better, and can we see a better TJ? Like, we need to see a better TJ. It, it's just what it is. I mean... A little shit, dude. I don't know, man. This is it's 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 not fun to watch. Like it sucks. Like I'm sure all the uh, ex Optic Gaming fans are like, yeah, bro. Like let's go. I told you guys. But like, like if they're good, like think about this. Think about this league if they I get know. to what we think they should yeah. be. Holy shit! Like think about this so league. Much how competitive man. it'll be. The, the the team that has I still think could be like in that top three combo has zero points. Like yeah. <laughs> this league could be insane, man. And like, yeah, I mean, it just, just takes one weekend, but they need. Unfortunately, they have a week until the next event for them. Yeah. And it, it's a very winnable group. They're in a, a, I mean, it's like them in Minnesota, I think. Yeah. Uh, they play the Gladi or Gorillas to start. Um, yeah. And then Minnesota plays somebody else in that, in, in that group. Like it, it compared to the other group, it is, it's one, it's stacked. Yeah. Uh, so. I, I think LA, they just have to have a better performance. I don't know if they have to win. I, I think they do have to get out of groups. Not win. Have to like, improvement. I, yeah, you have to see them get out of groups uh, and have a tough mm -hmm. semifinal against a, a good team. Or yeah. get to the final, yeah. Or, or lose to... Yeah, I mean, the only actually, the only team that would be okay for them to lose to me is, like, FaZe. Yeah. Yeah. That's the point it's at for me. So... Very tough situation. I'm sure it's very stressful for all the people involved. <laughs> I'm and like, sure it is. And like, <laughs> we, we know these guys. It sucks, man. But like, you got to figure it out. It's too much talent in one, like, in one team. Like, just, oh, it's uh, crazy to even see them in this sort of spot. And the fact that we're saying this stuff about these caliber, this caliber of players is, it's just crazy in itself. Can't yeah, this to me is just the crime. example of what we were talking about uh, of not doing the little things to make them a, a better team. Yeah. Like, like the like those team activities. I, I just, I think this is a, a, a example of it, and I think it's on every single one of them. Someone needs to step up as a leader. That's just what it has to happen. Like, lead by example, right? That's just what it comes down to, and someone needs to do it. Yeah, that's a good point. All right. Uh, harped on the optic situation. They have their work cut out for them for sure. Moving on to Minnesota and, and Paris as we, I'm going to throw up this uh, bracket once again. Did you see, so you can see how these guys uh, ended up finishing, but uh, everyone's thoughts on uh, Minnesota and Paris. I kind of, I didn't knock Minnesota beforehand in the previous podcast, but I didn't really have that much hope for them. I don't know if this result was enough for me to like have a lot of faith in Minnesota still. Again, it's another one of those teams where it's like, when they play against like a, yeah, they're like sort of in that like fourth, fifth, sixth zone where I'm like, they're good, but I, I don't know. I'm not super. Sure. I lost to Huntsman Atlanta, right? Yeah. Like that's just like, that's uh, what it comes down to. It's tough. I don't want to take too much away from them, but. Uh, uh, I mean, come out, Chris and I, right? Yeah, I, I'll start. I, I didn't pick them. And that's just because I, we looked at the strength of schedule of who they played at their opening weekend. And it was Toronto and LA Gorillas. And, you know, the, you know, Gorillas, they struggled with. They had the forfeit win. And. You know, Toronto, I, I don't know, wasn't the toughest team. So for me, I just thought that Paris was going to beat them right off the stat, start. Uh, but they looked better than what I thought. Um, props to them. Like, I, I think Chris really talked about it. Like, these guys are a hardworking group. Uh, the opposite of what we just talked about with Optic. Like, it just seems like they have the chemistry on point. Alex and Gatorex continue to thrive. Uh, it, it impressed, I think, everyone. Assault had a much better weekend. Like, if you kind of look at their stats, like, they're, again, it's I mean, they went to a stats. game five with, yeah, they went to a game five with FaZe. So, like, uh, it just feels like they know this game. They, they're, I, I'll give them the props. I, I, I like this Rocker team moving forward. And I think at the LA event, we'll, we'll obviously preview that, but, you know, they should get to a semifinal once again. Well, I guessed Simp for making that, like, top, Top 10 KD. The only other sub on there was Alex. Alex yeah, I think yeah. he was like the number two sub. That's I think Goddard X was the Goddard X was the number two, number one flex. I think when you talk about statistically, um, Chris and I took them, and I mean I'm just going to be blunt on why I felt okay taking them. Well, one, I picked Goddard X to be like breakout player of the year for me. I, I thought he looked that good at the end of last year that I thought he was going to be insane. 
And two, when Joe and I, we got in late, like two, three weeks before the season, we started really diving into scrims. The first thing we did was sit down with Chris and go through games. And he was talking to us about teams and breaking stuff down. And one of the first things he said to us was he thought Minnesota had potential to be a top four squad. He really liked what he saw from them online. Um, you've heard how I feel about online results. Most of the time, it's going to be pretty, pretty similar to Lance. So I, and, and, and I just didn't trust, fully trust Paris is the other piece of that. Uh, those are really the two things. I just think Goddard X is nasty, and, and Chris really kind of hyped them up for me, and that's why I took them. And I think they lived up to the hype without question. They look good. Yeah, uh, I mean, I obviously agree because I picked them, but <laughs> I, to to what you just said, like I, I do remember that, and I think Goddard X has been a very good player since World War II. Uh, I think he was on, what was it? Was it Ghost Gaming back then? Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I played against him. I don't know. I played against him, and he went on a crazy streak on Valkyrie Hardpoint. I just remember it. But he has been so good for so long. He's never really got his chance to shine on one of these big name teams. He's always had like, like players on his team that can do well, but he's never had just like top tier pros that can go with the best, you know. And now watching him play, the way he plays this game, I think this game is really made for him. He plays really, really well. But if you look at this Minnesota team, man, like I know I'm biased with Asim, but he is so good. He's so impactful on the map. Alex has been so incredible since we met him on Unilad with World, World, uh, World War II, World War II. Yeah. right? Yeah, that was probably like when we met Alex, like in the scene for the most part. Yeah, we were surprised he had on the and, London roster, right? Yeah, like, and like <laughs> he, he's been incredible. Asim's been so good so far, and he's like kind of so young. He's got so much to learn. And then you have Goddard playing at the level he's been playing, which has been so good. Like they have a core three that is overlooked. And you, they they don't have the simp of the world or like all these like yeah. big big names currently, but man, these players are talented. And you also have, have Salt, who's like a yeah, he's, yeah. Off point. he's a top AR in the game. So yeah, that's he just had I'm, a bad year. Yeah, he had a bad year. Well, he had a bad year last year. Well, I think we could, I think he would say that himself. I don't think he played that well. Probably Was not he to his standard. MVP back in World War Two. In World War Two, yeah. yes. Yeah. But just in general, man, like I don't don't even talk about assault. Last year, envy was terrible. Right, they were not a good team. The team with the old world champions of World War II and EG combined with Envy of Huke, everyone's like they're going to be good. They were terrible. I don't think anyone thought they were going to be that good. That team had Huke, and everyone said Huke needed help. That was like the gimmick in the beginning of the year, if I remember. Justin was playing just as good. Silly, oh, was Silly nasty, was playing yeah. just as good as Huke. Like people <sighs> overlook him so much, where like. This team is, I, I don't know, I feel like Minnesota is just so underrated with having such a good core three. Assault being a good AR so far in this game, you know, he's bouncing back from last year. And then, like, man, like, I, I feel like you haven't really seen Silly do bad in a long time, but you don't talk about him too much because he's not the not huge of the world. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was playing just as good as Kyler in that Envy world in Black Ops 4. Like, he was the go-to guy, you know what I'm saying? And no one really talked about it, and I feel like that's why this team is just so good. Like they have a good pace. You have Alex and Asim who are really, really aggressive. You have a great flex who could be aggressive and slow at the same time. Assault who's in the back of the map with the AR doing what he needs to do. That's exactly what you have to do in this game. And then Justin who's like in the middle of both. You know, like I feel like they have a good team. They work really hard. I think highly of their coaching staff, and I, I just think right now I've j I've been a fan of them since this games came out. Uh, and I just think their mindset, they're really close as a team. I think it's just taking them a long way. And that's why I, I'm just not surprised to see how well they played us and how good they do. And I think they have a good season ahead of them, honestly. A lot of good points. Uh, I, I agree a lot. I think someone like Alex is going to continue to get better and better. He's proven himself for so long now. Uh, sort of a like shining star for them. goddard has been absolutely amazing carrying that same sort of performances from the the second half of bo4 season so they have the pieces uh, i they're starting to turn my opinion uh, i did yeah. i wasn't super sold i'm not sure i need to see a couple more reps from them but they're they, they're turn they're turning it for me for sure uh you look at statistic wise there's really still he didn't have the best of events here but it wasn't like too poor so you expect someone like him to be able to put up a little bit better yeah i mean numbers, when you got three guys yeah, almost like, around a 1.15 so you can't really be yeah. Yeah. You can't really fault them too much for it. So I'm like right about even on the teeter totter. If I can get one more really strong showing from them, then I'll, I, the rocker get my support. Yeah. They have to take advantage of their group in London mm -hmm. or in LA. Oh, definitely. LA. Yeah. If they don't get out, then we're just sort of like, <laughs> like oh. <laughs> shoot. <laughs> right. So. Uh, right. I want to I want to talk okay. about one thing real quick, T, uh, just because I remembered it. And I, did, I didn't add it to like sort of our rundown for the show. Uh, the stats thing. So 
we we saw the comments from some people on the YouTube uh, right. comments basically saying, hey, I wish these guys would dive a little bit deeper into the stats. Um, we have a lot of stats. And I know we're talking like surface level, just like certain certain modes and KD and haven't really dived in deep. I think the main reason is because with just two events, there's not a lot of stats yet to consistently oh, talk about stuff. There's just not a lot of data to use yet. I think when we get a couple more tournaments in, it'll be a lot easier to talk about strong maps for certain teams and they'll have... We'll have more data to go off. So I think you will see more of that stuff from us. Uh, it and, just seems kind of pointless right now because there's not much to use. And I think the biggest thing we will like try and pick apart moving forward once we do have a more like stat base to go off of. Uh, this is what obviously something that I love to do as a coach. Just I want to pick apart some map picks and vetoes. There's going to be some glaring issues. Honestly, we had our own glaring issues with like the optic team too that we were just like so stubborn on as a team that would piss me off too. But like picking <laughs> apart like certain maps just aren't working and and the fact that some teams i want to see which teams are being stubborn uh you know obviously there's the whole reasoning between like strong side for hard points and favorable sides all that i get it but at a certain point the the stats kind of don't lie once you get to a certain point in the season so yeah i, I think that's a good disclaimer we want to use that stuff more but like there's only so much to go off of that's relevant right now. Probably a stat producer too, because that just takes more time. And I know sometimes, sometimes yeah. it's hard, man. Like Joe and I had to fly to LA to record a show. We've got editorial stuff to send in. We basically get back. We have uh, try to get a stream live and then do the show. So yeah. that might be something we actually want to talk about. Like someone, someone that can kind of put yeah. stuff together for our talking points. But yeah, that's it. maybe uh, something we think about doing. Before. Yeah. <laughs> no, good point. Uh, let's touch on Paris a little bit. Um, they, they, I picked them, man. They let me down. I, I. In my predictions, I had London, I had Paris. Uh, yeah. Can I even pick European teams anymore? They're <laughs> pissing me off and making my stats look bad on our predictions. But uh, <laughs> the biggest one, the the glaring change, it's Kismet. It, it, what a it was such a poor event for him. I don't know what happened. He looks so good. Wow. Uh, it, it's like something went wrong. Uh, like I don't know if it's a, like a mental thing or, or really what happened. But you look at what he was able to do. And then you looked at what he did this past tournament, and I it's just such a dramatic difference. And I don't want to put all the blame on him, but its it just looked weird watching his POV in some of their matches. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I'll take that one just because I like I, I was a big believer in him. Uh, I mean, he he's a player even last year. I think he had one weekend, man. I can probably go back and find it. Uh, probably while Joe's uh, talking, I actually, I'll actually go do that. But he had one really bad weekend last year as well, where he kind of just said, like, honestly, I felt like off. I, I wasn't too confident. I'm pretty sure this is true. And like, he just wasn't happy with the way he performed and just went back, worked harder and came back like stronger. I just honestly think like he just had a bad weekend and I think his team suffered from it. I think he's yeah. a really, really yeah. big, important piece of that team. I know I always talk about that team. I was a big believer in the beginning of the year. I still am. Uh, he he's one of those players that needs to do good for that team. Like those guys have really good talent, but they also have some incon inconsistent talent. Like you've seen Zed before. Zed has been so, so good at times. And then there's some times where he kind of starts off like, where, where'd he go? You know? And like, I think that like Kismet being like their rock is like really important. So I, I feel like he just had an off weekend. I think him, maybe, maybe he was unconfident. Maybe something obviously could have went wrong. I don't know too much, but yeah. I wouldn't be worried at all if I was a Paris fan though. I really wouldn't. Even I'm pretty sure they, what would they lose to Minnesota? It was Twice, close. yeah, Twice. and it was yeah. a three-one, three, three-two. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I don't know. I, I think Minnesota's a great team, so I, I, I wouldn't be too worried right now. I think obviously if Kismet plays a little bit better, they could obviously win one of those three-two. Yeah, they have the three-two match. You know, like you don't really know. Right. So I don't know. I, I feel like they, they're in a pretty good spot. I, I think if anything, like we were yeah. maybe, maybe thinking they were like a top four. Now with seeing Minnesota, maybe they're more like a top six team. I, 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 I they're right there in the mix, man. They're, yeah. they're right there in the mix. I think uh, the one thing for me, like you guys are touching on Kismet. The one person for me when you look at some of these teams is like that flesh player and how important they are. And to me, that's Luca. Uh, I think he had a really, really rough weekend. Like this guy was meant to be the star. Like, you know, there was, was an interview. Yeah. yeah, like there was an interview. I don't know. Uh, maybe it was London, but, you know, they were just like, yeah, he's our superstar. We let him do what he wants. And it's like, Okay, great. Like you have freedom. Like you have to play. Like Denz has been amazing. Yeah. Like uh, he's been consistent. Like we we can touch on like Kismet and Shocks and Zed, whatever. But like that second guy, the consistent second guy, has to be like Luca to me. 
like we, we see it in the teams that are 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 really really good. Like you have Arsties for Chicago, you have Selium for Atlanta. Where where you at, Luca? Right? Like if yeah. you want to compete for top four, God Rex for Minnesota. That second AR, that second guy who seems like he has more freedom, needs to play better. Like it's just what it is. So for me, maybe it was just an off weekend for Luca and Kismet. Uh, I, again, I think it sucks because we're we're just trying to figure out how these teams wh- yeah. where they're at, right? And it's like, all right, they did really well at Minnesota Launch Weekend. And they got they almost beat Chicago in a semifinal. We're like, that's why I was like, all right, I'm in. Like I'm bought in. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, maybe just a, a rough weekend for them, but. For me, if there's one person, like, you know how we talk about Dylan for London? Mm-hmm. Like, Luca has to be that guy for me. Like, he, he's got to be better. Yeah, really good points. Fair um, enough. Yeah, I, we touched on basically every team. I guess the one thing we don't have on here is, is London. Um, let, me, let me throw up this bracket real quick. I, I had them making it out. I kind of put my faith in them to make a little bit of a run in the bracket from my prediction side of it. So... Going up the bracket, they they do end up losing uh, that knockout match to Florida in a, in a big game five. And like, Wuskin puts up the numbers again, dude. <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys saw the, the tweet as well. The amount of sniper picks that he got in comparison to everyone else. You guys 22 see that or something like that? <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. so absurd. Next was, next was eight or something like that. Yeah, it was, so it's it was just wild. like everyone else there. I guess you can point out the weakness in, in Jerd not making like a super big impact. But the rest, yeah, I don't think that's enough of a talking point. That's why they're okay. Yeah, it's not that bad. Like, everyone else is just kind of in that average zone. So, when if you pick out individuals, like, Dylan I'm played... I'm nervous. Dylan played better, but not like Dylan. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, it's like... Uh, they lost the face. Yeah. So what? You lost the face, yeah. and then Florida got hot. That's how I view it. Now, do, do I think... Am I still a little worried about London? Sure, but... I, that's all. That's all I think it is. They, they lost the face, which I don't think they're ever going to consistently beat. And we saw how Florida got hot Sunday. Yeah. Basically, what I think it boils down to. I just, I, I guess, the only surprising part, I think Joe and I can really speak to it since we commentate the first one, is just like how different those series were because they they beat Florida like they were fourteen times the team they were. Right. And yeah, it's crazy and then they losing to them later, which was, yeah. uh, I guess, the surprising part of it. But yeah, I'm just nervous for London because it's just like I feel like we continues even like with past top like eu teams we've always just had this conversation of when is it gonna happen and i i just don't know if it will i i don't know if this is the roster that's going to do it um and, and is Weston gonna continue at this level i don't know he has never done this for a year straight right like obviously what he's doing is fantastic but is he going to keep it up? I have no idea. And, what if he has a slow weekend? And you guys well, kind of where are they at? You guys kind of brought it up. It's like, what if Alex is on this roster? Yeah, and I just I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just yeah. I, yeah. I'm nervous. I don't know. I, I don't know if I can see this team winning right now. Well, I think the good thing for them is I don't think any of us see them winning a tournament. I, I don't right now. But do I see them getting to the champs? Yeah. So. It, I, I guess they they're good enough that they can afford maybe clicking later in the game. I, 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 they're getting enough points. They're I'm winning nervous. some series. I, I, I'm not too worried about oh, them. Like I'm nervous because Weskin is putting <laughs> up crazy stats. We need to yeah. highlight it, and they're still not able to like come through. Like Weskin's nuts, dude. Yeah. And they're still like, what, what if that goes down to a 1.2, like a more I don't know, 1.1. Like, yeah. You know, like ah, go ahead, Crowder. No, well, that's the question for you though. So, do you think what? So, Wuskin? No, not do you think Wuskin is playing well, but mm-hmm. do you think like? I feel like that number lowers when someone else starts to pick it up a little bit more. It might, though. like you know what I'm saying? Like I, I, or, I don't think it's like yeah, it's a good Wuskin's way to look at turn it. Turn down, well, I, and all of a sudden everyone's going to turn down with him. Like I feel like if we see that number decrease, I feel like it's going to be because one of his players start to do well. You actually well, might see that number decrease and his team be better. Rated in scraps, so this this, this was an improvement. From their last, oh no, week, yeah, no, 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 no. right. Muskin's so still playing well, yeah, right. I, I uh, yeah, it, it's I just know. so there's a point I, where it's like, is he is he putting his team as, as at a disadvantage with the play style, and that's why his stats are better? No, but right. What, the that. one thing that changes it for me is like the, the S and D side of it. The guy mm. got 20 million sniper <laughs> picks. That's insane. Like, if 
everyone else on the list was at like less than double digits sniper picks, right? If I remember that tweet correctly. Yeah, it was. So like the fact that he's doing that in SND two, and then putting up the respawn stats that are so high, like those are the ones that stick out for me. So like, yeah, you're totally right. Like those stats will come down a little bit. But like it's the S and D ones for me. Like the fact that he's able to like put up that many, and it's like, is the sniper hurting them? It's, it's like a lot of talking points there. But. Oh, yeah, it's almost can... like the same narrative for me though. Like I, I think this is what you want from rated scraps and Jerd. I, I don't mind this yeah. tournament performance from those three. I, I think it's the same narrative we've been talking about. We have to see the Dylan that we expected. Yeah, it's just yeah, what I, it is. Like this team is scary because of the Dylan. Because of the scary. Dylan. Yeah. Right. Like. like that's I think you, you have look consistent at players. Right. You have players who like they they know how they want to play the map, sort of like what Clint was talking about. Like they have a play style, and I think they trust one another. It, but if Dylan's not competing with the Dylan that we saw, chalk it. <laughs> chalk. Yeah. No, I no, I know what you're saying. Like I that that is the reason why this team is scary is because when you know Dylan at his final form. It's scary. You know, he's one of the best players in the world. So it's like, I'm just not worried with this team. And this could obviously be a worry down the, down the line. I don't know how long we're going to have a four MP5 meta for this long. It, may, it could be the whole game. It could be all year. And yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? This could be five. Stupid. It could be five <laughs> or, or it could be, yeah. or it could be three ARs in two weeks. You never, uh -huh. you never know with like patches and stuff. So I feel like this team had, I feel like most teams made, rosters having like two ar players one that can yeah. kind of flex but like yeah. two ars and then three subs so you know what i'm saying that's kind of what my team was based on like Celium was our second ar we had major as our, like i mean like that's kind of what we did too so i think this team also benefits a tad bit more not saying that rated play bad at all because obviously i think Dylan oh, from can a still play a little meta. Yeah. yeah but i think if the game changes in any kind of way i think it does help them a little bit just because point even though Rated did not play bad at all, I just feel like the way Rated plays, I feel like it's impactful with an AR. He's been very historically pretty good with one. So yeah. I, I'm just, I'm not worried. Kind of what Maven said, you know, they haven't won yet. They're still a good team. They have what they need, in my opinion. I really do think they do. I think Dylan is still sitting there waiting to really hit his form where I wouldn't be too worried. It's not like they're getting dead last. They're going to be in champs if they keep doing their thing, like what they're doing. They're keeping it up. It's just now... I think if the meta changes into any more ARs, I think they get a little bit better, which is important for them. And just in general, I, I just feel like they still have potential. I don't think they're spir spiraling downward. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think for sure. they're like just kind of coasting right now, you know? And I feel like they can have, they have what it takes to, to get it up to the next level. I just think obviously right now, maybe their players have to adjust to the game more. Like I, they have a lot working with them in my opinion. They're a team I trust to get points every weekend, even if yes. it's only 10. It, it, like, even yeah. if it's only 10 points, they're a team I trust But they're to get still going to do it. And that that goes a long way because at the end of the year when champs comes around, you know, like you don't know what the meta is going to be, but they have like just what they need. And I think they have more of a family vibe. I could be wrong. I know the brothers are really that close. Seems seem, yeah, it yeah. seems that way. Like they, they, they trust each other. And I think that's going to go a long way with them. If I was a London fan right now, I wouldn't have a worry in the world. Honestly, I really wouldn't. Like I, I, I like those guys over there, but just taking myself out of like the competition and just saying like if i was just a, a fan of london i really wouldn't have a worry in the world well, unless right you're now. expecting him to win then i'd probably worry as of now but like that yeah, can yeah, come yeah. Down i'm worried because i i predicted them and they messed it up <laughs> for me and now i'm losing and now they're I'm messing losing. up your stats i know my stats look are, i'm in last place now thanks london <laughs> unbelievable all righty you guys got anything else no i think we're Good to uh -huh, go. All righty. Yeah. I'm going to throw up the uh, the final points that all these teams earned from the Atlanta tournament. Obviously, you can see the Huntsman still in that number one spot. FaZe obviously cruising up with the win. Got 50 plus. They're at second place right there with 70. Paris Legion with 50. Uh, tied for fourth, we got Mutineers, Rocker, Royal Ravens. Number seven, we got the Empire with 30. And then the bottom of the bar barrel, we got Gorillas, Subliners, Surge, and Ultra with 10. And OG LA with a big old goose. That's going to do it for the episode this time. Uh, the next episode leading up will be leading into uh, the next tournament. So I'm excited to talk about that stuff. But thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure you guys sub up, follow the Hard Points podcast, and we'll see you next time.